In case you haven't noticed, we love podcasts. In fact, we love building podcasts, everything from development to production. Because of all that, we're building a one of a kind podcast network. If you have a podcast or looking to launch a new podcast, then we should talk. You can message me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz or hit us up any way that works for you. Let's talk about your podcast joining this one of a kind podcast network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to From the Players Podcast, where I am here for all of you past, present, and future players. This is a place where we keep it real and hear from athletes on who they are beneath the jersey and off the field. Without further ado, I am Sydney Supley. I am your host. From the Players is presented by Sports Entrepreneur and part of the Cas Source Podcast Network. Today, I bring to you one of the greatest blessings Travel Ball gave to me, was his friendship with Kiki Malloy, a Tennessee softball legend in the making who leads the team off, usually with a home run, and plays center field. You can find her constantly living on the NCAA softball Instagram page with either her sports center highlights from her moonshots or her showing off her ridiculous speed in the outfield, tracking down all the balls. Stay tuned for how I met Kiki through Travel Ball when we are living on opposite sides of the country, but still playing for the same Travel Ball team. What life is like in a family with an NFL player, all Americans, and a household of collegiate softball players. I hope you guys love this podcast as much as I loved being able to catch up with Kiki. She is truly one of a kind, and you are going to leave today in this episode feeling inspired to be the very best competitive version of yourself. And as a younger girl, you can learn so much for how Kiki not only carries herself on the field, but off the field as well. Welcome back, everybody. I am so excited to introduce you today. We have Tennessee's very own, one of my very best friends, (laughs) Kiki Malloy, who, let me tell you, Tennessee is 12 games into the season. And Kiki, you have literally had six home runs already. I mean... I am not good at math, but at least my math skills can tell me that's averaging a home run every other game, which is literally insane. So Kiki, I'm so excited to get you on today. Truly one of the hottest hitters in the country right now. How are you feeling? How is the beginning of season going for you? Yeah, you know, it's an exciting time getting back into the swing of things with my girls. You know, we've been traveling a lot and finally happy that we get an at-home series, but it's always fun to... The beginning of the season is always just a good time and exciting time because, you know, it's been a year since we've played softball and competing. So I'm really enjoying it. I love that. And just to give a little bit of background for those who may not know how we know each other, <laughs> Kiki and I, kind of crazy, we played on the same travel team, mm-hmm. the Beverly Bandits. But what is literally even crazier is the fact that I am from Wisconsin you are from Washington and mm-hmm. we were playing for a travel team out of Chicago. <laughs> right, right. And you actually come to Washington sometimes. Like, that's yes. true. So. <laughs> make it make sense because it really doesn't. So, I mean, so many people are going to hear that and just wonder, like, why would you specifically, mm-hmm. you know, mine was just a couple hour drives, but you flew across the country mm-hmm. how many weekends? Why did finding a travel team across the country means so much to you that you were willing to travel so much of your childhood? Mm -hmm. So I kind of got into the Bandits organization because of Tara Navello. At the time, she was playing for the University of Washington, which my sister also played. So we were kind of close with her and her family. So then her dad was coaching a team at the time. And he was like, hey, you want to come play? And I was like, you know what? Might as well. We were looking at travel ball teams outside of the state anyway. So I was like, hey, I know this person, so I might as well go and play with them. And I ended up having such a great experience being a lot of great people and playing for one of the best travel ball organizations in the country. Could not have said it better. I mean, truthfully, Bandits really has set us up and so many other girls across the country. And how do you think they were able to do it? You know, was it the coaching, the level of competition we faced? Mm -hmm. What do you think it was? Honestly, I do think, yeah, the coaching, but I think once I got into it, I was 18U, so I was kind of already developed, but I think just creating a group of girls that were going to go out there and compete and then having the coaches that allowed us to do that was what made us so successful. 
I agree. And I mean, I think I have bandits to thank for so much of, you know, I started when I was 12 years old, <laughs> which is crazy. So I have right. them to thank for like a lot of my developmental, mm-hmm. but like just the relationships, like, yeah, like, I don't know about you, but it's like we go and we play, you know, teams in different conferences or mm-hmm. we go to tournaments right now. I feel like every team we play against, like I could pick out a bandit player. Right, right. We just played each other and I gave a bunch of you guys hugs because I played with a bunch of you guys. I mean, even though I only played with you guys for like two years, we still made connections that are going to last a long time. I have to share a funny story on here. So the game gets over because <laughs> we played each other a few weekends ago. Mm-hmm. And my dad comes up to me. He was like, right before Kiki's at bat, she waves to me. And he goes, I was so excited. I waved back. And then she hit a home run. And I was like, oh, shoot. I hope nobody saw me wave oh my to her. God. <laughs> oh, it was so great. But I mean, it just shows that like relationships are so much bigger than the game sometimes, right. you know? Yeah. And I was going to say hi to them. I saw them actually earlier in the weekend, but they were busy watching you. So I didn't want to bother them. But as soon as I saw them, I was like, you know what? I have to give them a little wave. Like I can't just go up here, act like I don't know them. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to speak to them after the game. So I was like, you know what? Let me just give a little hi. (laughs) I love it. You know, Heidi, she's probably listening. She ate that all up. So Exactly. And she even sent a picture to my mom of us hugging. And then you sent me the picture after the game. Gosh, I love that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I have to speak about your family because obviously you have grown up in such like an athletic household. Mm -hmm. I mean, for those of you who don't maybe recognize the last name right away, but obviously your father, Lawyer Malloy, 15 years in the NFL, how many Pro Bowls? I mean, I always knew he was legit, but I have to tell you, when the Tom Brady series came out yeah, like a year ago, I remember texting him when I see him on one of... He's like the main guest in one of Tom Brady's. I was like, wow, lawyer, like you're legit. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I cannot give him all the credit. Claudine, your mother, obviously mm-hmm. all American track. You mentioned your sister, Amira, played at Washington. Your younger sister, Tia, committed to Oklahoma. Lord only knows where Priya's going to go. You know, it's just insane. But what has it been like growing up in such an athletic and I'm sure competitive household? I'm not going to lie to you. Having three sisters can be a little overwhelming. Even now that I'm out of the house, when I come back, it's still... Everything is turned up competition because I missed so many months. But it was great growing up with one, just the support that I had for my family. And then just having parents and then an older sister who could kind of help me guide, like have that smoother transition into college because they had played college athletics. Mm -hmm. So they kind of knew what that was like. That kind of helped me be prepared. And then having my younger sisters, like everything that I do now is for them. You know, Mm -hmm. I want to be a pioneer for them in softball or just women's athletics in general, no matter what they do. So everything that I do, I'm thinking of my younger sisters and the path that I'm going to set for them. I love that. I mean, and knowing them, I know how much they look up to you. Can you think of any maybe advice that you'd say like either one of your parents has given you Mm -hmm. from being a former athlete that's really stuck with you throughout the years? Mm -hmm. I think just with my parents, they didn't really care what we did, but whatever we chose to do, we were going to go out there and we were going to compete and we were going to be the best. Like when I was younger, I played basketball. And for a second there, I thought I wanted to pursue basketball. And they were like, okay, that's fine. But you know, you're going to go out there, you're going to put in the work, you're going to put in the time. And like, if that's what you're going to choose to do, then you're actually going to do it. Like you're not going to waste our time and our resources to go out there and just mess around. So yeah, just going out there and really loving what you do and competing at it if that's what you want to do. I love that. And I mean, I know your family and like competing is name of the game. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I know you have the stories. Like give me a funny competition story. You can talk about your family. Man. Well, when I was, you know, you were there for my travel ball days when I used to pitch. (laughs) There were times where my older sister and I were in the cage and I would be pitching and she would be hitting. And my dad would be like, okay, well, she's up 1-0 on you. Or like with my little sister, like we'll both be hitting in the cage. And my dad goes, well, Tia just hit better than you today. So it's like, it's just things like that. Like my dad starts it all. And then it's kind of like, okay, let's have this little competition. And it helps having sisters that are Mm. as good or even better than me. 
because, you know, it keeps me sharp. Like I can never take a day off. Like when we're hitting together, like I always have to be on top of it. Cause I'm like, dang, I can't let my little sister beat me. I can't. Like, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> so yeah, just things like that. Like it's just, whenever we go hit, it's just always that little competition, that little chatter that we have with each other. And it's all fun. It's all love, but yeah. Do you feel like kind of developing, you know, that competitive side with your sisters and then Mm -hmm. you go to college and, you know, everyone's your, say, sisters. Right. And do you feel like, you know, you're just so used to competing that that was such an easy transition for you, maybe more than others? Yeah. Again, I think coming from the household that I come from, that transition from like my coaching that I had to the coaching that I got in college wasn't necessarily as difficult as it might have been for other people because like I knew that you know if I didn't do something that I was gonna get ripped into and I had had that since I was younger and then I knew like as a freshman there would be girls who are seniors that would play above me but I wanted to get in there and do what I can to make them better and then that would make me better so I mean you've done that from day one you know in four years in now you know counting COVID you know, you walked onto that field your freshman year and you were a starting center fielder. You were lead off. Like, yeah. walk me through like freshman year, you with playing in the SEC, like the biggest of stages. Mm-hmm. How were you able to step on and dominate right away? Man, I actually didn't. Freshman year, COVID year was horrible. <laughs> I mean, I think I remember seeing you hit a home run. So okay. I yes. can't say it was all horrible. It was like, because... Everyone talks about how I hit a home run like in my first at bat or whatever. And funny enough, it was against Northwestern. I know. Why does this happen? We've only played you twice. <laughs> exactly. Just had to put that in. And then <laughs> honestly, I probably went like 0 for 20 in my next at bats. So by the end of like my little whenever freshman year ended, like by the end of preseason, I was batting like <laughs> 190. It was really bad. And that was like the worst I've ever done in my life. Mm-hmm. So I know. COVID was a horrible time, but it kind of was a little blessing for me to have like that reset. So then coming in like the next year, I was able to be like, okay, that's something I don't ever want to get back to. So how am I going to work to be elite, to be better than what I was freshman year? How am I going to use those mental blocks that I went through freshman year so that that will never happen to me again? So I think honestly, it's crazy because I'm a senior now. I still think about my freshman year Like, I don't ever want to be in that position that I was in. And so I think that kind of drives me to, you know, if I don't want to go hit one day, like, just get up and go. Or, you know, if I'm feeling one way, I'm like, hey, I cannot let myself get in this mindset or else I know where that's going to lead me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you talk about those mental blocks and like, I know you and I know you have such good Mm self-talk. What are some ways you could say that you've learned throughout your college career that you could Mm -hmm. give advice to other hitters of when they are facing those times, like what are some reassurance or self-talk that they can get themselves out of it? I think just reminding yourself like that you're here and you Mm -hmm. made it here. And that in and of itself is more than enough. Not a lot of people are able to make it here and compete at a high level. And I think like my freshman year, I would go up against a big name pitcher and I'd be freaking myself out. And then, you know, like when you're freaking yourself out and you're talking bad about yourself, like then you're not going to perform at your best. So I think just remind myself like, hey, like I'm here. It's just another girl. It's just I'm mm-hmm. playing against nine girls named Sally. And <laughs> it doesn't matter who I'm playing against. As long as I go out there and play my game, then I'm going to be successful because that's what got me here. And that's why I was able to dominate when I was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so good. I think that's like such an important lesson that so many college athletes go through. And Mm -hmm. it's like, it's so funny because when you get to college, it's like you have this constant, like, I need to show that I belong here. Like, right. Yeah. Like I need to prove it when it's like you were recruited. Exactly. You were hand selected to be on this team, but yet we all feel like we need to prove ourselves even Mm -hmm. every year, even, you know, being a fourth year now. Right. Right. And it's like, when I'm going up against a pitcher, like she's probably thinking the same thing. Like she has to throw it in the strike zone. Like, and so I can't, yeah, like I can't freak myself out and make her better than what she is because of the way I'm talking to myself. So it's just kind of, yeah, it's like things like that, knowing that, you know, everyone kind of probably has like a little bit of self-doubt, but you can't let that fester into something bigger. 
I mean, you're just like every picture's worst nightmare. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I try to be, I try to be, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm really curious, like what is life like playing in the SEC? Because I mean, I'm in the Big Ten, but I know SEC mm-hmm. is its own monster from just the stadiums, the atmospheres, like mm-hmm. what is it like? I mean, you never have an easy series. Mm-hmm. Like playing in the SEC, just seeing it for the past four years, like any team can come out here and beat you because like every team in the SEC is just that good. Mm-hmm. So it can be hard at times because when it gets later in the season, like you get tired and you just, but that's when like your mental toughness kicks in and it's like, okay, what team is more mentally tough than the other one? And that's the team that's going to win. So yeah, just playing in the SEC is, you have to be a different breed to like really succeed in the SEC. I believe it. I mean, if you want to play in the Big Ten, you just got to have thick skin. You got to be able to. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Which let me tell you, I'm so curious to see UCLA join the Big Ten. Like that is just, let me tell you, wild. So wild. It's weird. It's just, I don't know why, but yeah, I'm very interested to see how that's going to be for them. Like just traveling so much because I know like it's hard to just get off the plane and play, Mm -hmm. but we'll see. Yeah. It was so funny. We played them this last weekend Mm -hmm. and people were like, oh, Big Ten matchup. And I was like, wait, (laughs) is there a spelling error on here? Am I missing something? (laughs) Exactly. It just doesn't sound right because they've been in the pack for so long. So yeah, I mean, switch things up, I guess. It does not add up. I mean, you talk about the pack. You're from Washington. Your whole family has went to UW for as long as I can remember. Like, how did you come to the conclusion that you wanted to go and play at Tennessee? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes things just don't work out and that's okay. But luckily, I was able to go and visit other schools and I found a couple schools that I really love. But in the end, Tennessee just had my heart and obviously it still does because I love our coaching staff. I love the community, especially like the Lady Ball community and how much they care about women's athletics. And just like me being here, I feel like I have a whole family here. So (sighs) it was hard leaving my family. It was hard kind of leaving a legacy, but I'm kind of creating my own legacy. So it's a lot easier now because of the support system that I have around me. I mean, you absolutely are. That's what I love about your journey. Like you're making your own mark on Tennessee, (laughs) which is so, so cool. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just what are some of your goals this season? Like you guys have had a talented team as long as we've been in college softball. You're off to a Mm -hmm. really great start. What are maybe some team, but even personal goals that you have? I mean, we also, we were talking before this podcast, like we're not getting any younger. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, not to make us sound old, but like our time of softball is we're trying to make the most count. And kind of as you're, you know, towards your last two seasons, what are some marks on the game that you want to leave in the program? Yeah, I guess I'll start with just the program first. I mean, the past two years, our ending has not been what we want it to be. So I think just continuing to play together up until the very end and I think just making it further than what we have, I think is obviously a program goal. I know it's a goal for me because, you know, I've been part of those two teams that ended short in regionals and ending short in regionals on your own home field and hearing that other team celebrate. That's like one of the worst feelings ever. Like I don't ever want to feel that again. So winning the SEC, that's again, another big thing. I think that we can, and I think we will. And then personal goals, I don't know. It's just, I think I just want to go out there and just have fun, but go out there and compete and be just a dominant force whenever I step onto the field. And I think that if I continue to play the game that I've been playing it, hopefully I will be that dominant force whenever I step on the field. So you mentioned earlier too about how you're the second oldest sister, how now it's mm-hmm. about setting an example for your two younger sisters. Right. But also it's not even just your sisters. It's all the younger girls who turn on a TV and they look mm-hmm. up to you. What example do you want to set for all of them? I think especially just being a woman in sports, I think sometimes you can 
be called emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that can be taken in a bad way. I actually was just talking about this with my teammates and they're like, you just get really hyped. And I'm like, you know what? I freaking love it. Like I love like when you get that big hit or like your teammate, like makes an amazing play, like getting like just super excited. And I think just showing young girls that they can have that swag and they can have that excitement and that passion and be emotional in the game of softball or in their life. And that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You see the boys going out there cussing at the refs and and no one says anything to them. Or like you saw a coach or something crying and nobody said anything. They said, oh my gosh, that's passionate. But then when a female coach or a female player is crying, they're like, oh my gosh, she's so soft. Like I want to show that that passion is actually power. And that's something that we're going to carry not only in our sport, but within the rest of our life. And that's just what I want to do is like uplift young girls to see that that's okay. Can I get an amen? Like that is so good. I mean, I want to talk about that more because it's so, so true. Like your father obviously played for the NFL, right? easily the most dominated sport in just American Mm -hmm. culture. And Mm -hmm. they're able to show their passion, throw their helmets, do everything to show every emotion. But the second, you know, a female Mm -hmm. does it, we're looked at as so differently because, you know, we're supposed to be the dainty ones, the nurturing ones, the loving ones. Like, how are you like, no, let's switch the script. Like I said, I think just being okay, looking a little crazy, you know? Yeah, I love it. Like, hey, if I'm excited, I'm going to show I'm excited. There's times for you to be cool. There's times for you to be like, yeah, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. But there's also times like if you do something great, like celebrate yourself. If your teammate does something great, celebrate them. That's what makes the game and just life so much fun. And if we're trying to protect that daintiness, then, you know, it's 2023. I'm sorry, but (laughs) it's just not that time anymore. And if we're going to talk about equality and have Title IX, then let's start acting like, women can do exactly what the men can do. Exactly. And have permission to do what the men do. Exactly. We know we can do it, but like we want the permission from society and we don't need the permission Mm -hmm. actually. We can just do it. Right. Exactly. You're right. But I mean, so many, so many good things with that. And that's what this podcast truthfully is all about. It's just like Mm -hmm. allowing there to be a platform for women like you and women in our sport because they're truthfully going to be women who are leading on the field, but are leading off the field as well. Mm -hmm. And I guess this perfectly segues me into also what I wanted to talk to you about is the fact that not only are you incredibly talented as an athlete, but you're also so smart. And I'm sure (laughs) no one on this podcast is expecting me to say that you're majoring in neuroscience. But look at that. I mean, (laughs) Woman in STEM, let's talk about it. Oh my God. Like that's also another male-dominated industry. Mm-hmm. So how have like what you've experienced and like, I don't care what they think I can do as a woman on the field or in sports. Like how has that transitioned to also being a woman in a male, pretty much dominated field? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny that I'm a neuroscience major because I thought I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> like when I was getting into college, kind of young, And then like, so now I just got into the MBA program. So I want to do something. Congrats! Yeah. Amazing. So I do want to go into something that like sports agency, which again is something that is male dominated. But I think I'm just kind of, especially with like NIL and everything that has came about with that. It's great that we're able to pay college athletes, but I do think that there's still kind of like disparities between male and female athletes when it comes to things like that. So I think that also has kind of encouraged me to pursue something Mm. like sports agency because I do want to be that advocate for female athletes, especially being one and just seeing everything that we have gone through and then like the male side of it. So that's kind of what my future hopes and dreams are, I guess. I mean, I want to like play a role here. So You become like a sports agent. Right. And you're heavily involved at NIL right now. Like, I love seeing you, you know, get your money's worth Mm -hmm. while being in college. But it's like, how can you make it better for the next generation? What are steps that we need to take and that you would want to change the narrative and allow female college athletes Mm -hmm. to get as much as the men? I mean, I think it starts off by 
increasing like the viewing of female athletics and sports because we compete we have amazing amazing games like we go out there and i think that you're starting to see it a little bit more especially in softball with like the world series like how many views the world series got or like that mm-hmm. oklahoma ucla game was just retaped on the mlb network like those are such big strides in our community and i just want to see that in every other community within female athletics and i think that We can start with that, hopefully, increasing that because we're entertaining as well. Absolutely. It was actually Mm -hmm. cool. I took a video because as we were walking up from our game, Mm -hmm. the Oklahoma UCLA game was going on. Right. And I like took a video of the crowd and I like posted it in like parentheses and was like, people don't watch college softball. (laughs) And it was like all of a sudden I like got off the plane and it was like 90 retweets, a thousand likes. I was like, I told you people watch. Like, I Mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't. I feel like it's interesting. Or even like basketball or volleyball or soccer. Like, it's interesting to watch. And I just don't know why people don't. So. Yes, absolutely. Women's sports is without a doubt on the rise. But Mm -hmm. I mean, truthfully too, like we talk a little bit about you on the field, off the field. What would you say you know, besides agency, like who is Kiki Malloy off the field? I think, again, coming from just the family that I come from, I'm a natural born competitor. Mm -hmm. And I truly strive to like whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm like invested in at that moment, like I want to be the best at. And I think sometimes my competitiveness can come off as me maybe being a little mean but I promise it's all in good intentions but I'm gonna tell you how it is and I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything because that's just not who I am as a person I feel like any of my teammates would tell Mm -hmm. you that but I feel like I am very much so loyal to the people who are around me and I truly love the people who are able to unlock those little tiny pieces of me that not everyone gets to see. I love that. Yeah. I mean, being a former teammate yourself, like I could (laughs) just back you up and everything that you said Mm -hmm. is is so true. Right. And you talked about how special it is when a teammate's able to unlock that side of you. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you think, what makes a great teammate who's able to do that? Mm -hmm. What are some ways you could tell a younger girl listening, like, this is how you can be a great teammate and also like a leader as well, because you're also Mm -hmm. a huge leader in everything that you do in life. I think you just have to understand that everyone is different. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to be friends with everyone that is on your team. Like you don't have to be best friends with them. Like that's not what being a team is about, but kind of understanding where people come from, learning about maybe their background, that's going to help you understand why they think the way they think, why they play the way they play. And I think that's the key to being a good teammate is once you have that trust because you know each other you're able to hold each other accountable on the field off the field because they know that you have their best intentions in heart Mm -hmm. how many of that would you say like you apply to being a leader on your team right now you talked about you guys are heading into your first home weekend your first home opening series and how are you leading your team right now in this current moment yeah i think it's important to know that there's multiple types of leaders and something that I might not be as good as one of the other leaders on my team may be, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think not having me put everything on my plate because I'm not good at everything and I can be open and honest about that. Like, so sharing the roles of leadership because leadership is not just a one person thing. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes a lot of people think that, but there can be multiple leaders on the team. And I think, teams need multiple leaders because everyone has different personalities. Everyone has things that they bring to the table that's going to help the team. That's so important because I feel like a lot of times people, if you're a leader, it's like they have to do it all. And they feel this Mm -hmm. pressure when it's like great leaders make other people leaders as well. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just like, it's about bringing people up, calling people up instead of like calling people out. That's something that we talk about on our team we're trying to make people better. We're not trying to single them out for mistakes that they made. 
So that's just kind of like what I think about when we go in, when I think about leadership. Mm -hmm. Well, I can honestly say that this time has flown (laughs) by and I think I have to have you on the podcast again, just so we can continually catch up within both of our crazy schedules because I need more of it. And I think this is also like a really cool, I hope you guys were able to hear our friendships and our our stories through it because that's Mm -hmm. what sports and softball has brought both of us so many relationships. Yeah, it's crazy. Like just playing in college because like you obviously have your teammates right now, but there's girls that you play travel ball with. There's girls that you have known since you were like five years old that now you're playing against. And it's kind of weird to think that you're playing against like someone that's your best friend, but you also kind of have to like shift your mindset into, okay, I guess she's just another girl on the team. And then after we play, you know, we go back to being best friends, but it's a weird dynamic, but I love it. Yes. And I really (laughs) think of like the term like life teammates, like Mm -hmm. you have Mm -hmm. all of your teammates, the team you currently have, but you have people who are a part of like your team and you know, your family forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like there are some people that I played with, like Sid included that are going to be invited to my wedding. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I better be there. <laughs> girl, you will. Come on. But I better be at yours. Oh, you're <laughs> going to meet the person. You'll know when it's happening. You have to approve first. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, it's so much more than softball because you're going to be with these girls and these women like for the rest of your life. Like you're going to have these relationships for the rest of your life. So absolutely. But Kiki, I am just, so honored you joined us on the podcast. But I mean, more than anything, you're such ambassador for our sport, but just for women all over. I mean, I love what you talked about, just encouraging the passion, you know, never try to dull yourself being Mm -hmm. a woman, understand Mm -hmm. that you can stand tall. And for anyone who wants to see passion, please tune in to watch Tennessee softball. You will see Kiki in center field, diving all over the place, (laughs) hitting home runs, but also just being such a fierce competitor from her wonderful family and just Mm -hmm. so excited to see what you do even when the game is over, all the incredible work you're going to do and just helping women all over. But once again, this has been another episode from the players and thank you so much for joining us, Kiki. Thank you. Love you so much, girl. (laughs) Love you too. In case you haven't noticed, we love podcasts. In fact, we love building podcasts, everything from development to production. Because of all that, we're building a -a one-of-a-kind podcast network. If you have a podcast or looking to launch a new podcast, then we should talk. You can message me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz or hit us up any way that works for you. Let's talk about your podcast joining this one-of-a-kind podcast network.